Hey guys, my name is Aga Tompkins and I am a hairstylist, makeup artist. Welcome to my channel. If you've already been here before, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, this is a good place to start because this video is actually a little bit about my life and who I am and where I've come from and how I got to where I got to in my career. Tune in. Hope you guys enjoy this video. So today I decided to do something a little bit different than I have done before and I realized even though a lot of you that are subscribed to my channel know me, a lot of you guys are new and don't really know who I am and I figure what better way to find out who I am than story time. So I needed to do my nails and I decided to have you guys join me for it. Let's see how this goes. It's something new. Uh, we got nothing to lose, you know? If you hate it, just be like, later. I know a lot of people are curious about the backstory of my life. I decided I'm gonna have to do it into like split sessions, and what better way than do it every time I need to do my nails. So I can just work and do my nails and tell you guys the deets on my life. Why not? Here goes nothing. Let's go to the beginning. So I was born in a small town in Poland and I moved to America with my family when I was five years old. We moved to Chicago, so that's where I grew up. I didn't know English or anything like that and I learned it all here. I am gonna focus this a little bit on my art part of my life and the beauty part of my life. I feel like I will gear it towards what got me to where I got to in my career. I've always loved art, that was, that was always one of my passions and one of my loves of my life. Since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be an artist. So I always did art. It was just the one thing that I had that was always consistent in my whole life from being a child to my adult years. The first artist to ever inspire me actually was my big sister, Marlena. I was actually probably about four years old. It's one of my first memories. She drew a picture of a princess and I was like, oh my God, that is the most beautiful princess I've ever seen in my life. And that moment changed my life. So I knew right then forever that I wanted to do art. I remember drawing princesses that were nowhere near as good as my sister's princess. Actually, they were so bad, but I remember them. I have like an image. I should just redraw it. I drew some ugly princesses, but I tried so hard. Hers was like perfectly symmetrical and just like incredible. I can picture hers in my head too. So that was my first introduction to drawing and art and I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. Who remembers, by the way, drawing like shoes? I remember drawing shoes and like one shoe would be like this big and the other shoe would be like this big. And I really tried so hard to make them the same size. No, that wasn't gonna happen. The one heel was like this, a clunk, and the other one was like little, and I'm like, what is going on? And I mean, granted I was like four, but still, what, why? It's like the car pictures, this is a car, and it's like the worst car ever as a little kid you draw, and you're like, what was that? But anyway, so then fast forward to through my life, we grew up in Chicago public schools, and my parents worked a ton. They couldn't really watch us during the summer when you know, we weren't in school. So we had to go to, it was like summer school, but it was like social center. So we would do art and whatever, music class, art class, whatever. We just focused our lives on art. Everything in our lives was art, art, art. So since we always did art, by the time I got to seventh and eighth grade, when you do Hutterat stuff with your friends, my friends were like, hey, can you dye my hair? At that time, it was popular to have bleach blonde hair, kind of like a bob, or not a bob. I guess, yeah, I guess it was a bob. And my friends would be like, box dye my hair. They used to steal the box dye from the grocery store, and they would like steal it in the separate parts out of the box so they, they didn't get caught. I didn't do it. I never did it because I was a total chicken and would have never done. Stealing was just never my thing. And I would dye their hair. And that was like my first introduction to doing hair. 
I had been doing like my own makeup from like sixth grade I was already doing my makeup regularly so that was just like part of who I was I was kind of a chola brown lipstick sharpie eyebrows the whole thing I definitely wore Cortez Nikes you know what I'm saying and Dickies that was my get up every day my hair was always up in a bandana and that was my life my best friend at the time her name was Lucy she had a cousin that lived in LA who was a chola and she was so cool to us I mean we literally thought her style was the coolest and this is before uh, you could like email pictures so Lucy's cousin would send us like photos of her and her friends like all super cool and stuff and we were just like that's the coolest so that's what we did brown lip liner all the stuff and that's kind of what first got me into makeup and hair those two things then fast forward to high school I was definitely because I was an artist I kind of got grandfathered into my high school through my sister she went to my high school for the four years before I went there she kind of set me up by like seventh grade I was going to her high school to build set for drama class and it was intense we had like an awesome drama teacher he made serious productions I just realized I'm not even doing my nails this whole time okay back to business when I went to the high school starting freshman year I was the art director of the high school because my sister was an art director before I got there and since I already had experience when I got there I was in charge of the art department the plays at the school and for the choir people and all that stuff I also did lighting for the plays and stuff like that I don't know it was just always fun being on set and whatever part of stuff in that world chicago had this program where to keep kids off the streets and it was called gallery 37 and starting the summer of seventh grade i was taking the train downtown you had to audition to get this role and some of you may remember have heard they had these cows in chicago my sister actually did it too before me and she got me into that too my first real real job where I got a real real paycheck was working for gallery 37 and I did portraits I did painting benches some of them are at O'Hare Airport if you're ever traveling through O'Hare Airport and you see painted benches this guy did that um, I still can't find any of mine. They're somewhere out in this world, but who knows where. That's the beginning art part of my life. By the time that I was done with high school, I wanted to go to Columbia College, which is an art school in Chicago. That was like my dream. And I realized it was so much money, my parents couldn't send me there. There was no way. And so I missed a whole year of school. And by the time I went to college, I already had jobs and whatever and then I just kind of stopped doing college and started working. I ended up getting a job with the shoe company that I'm sure you guys, some of you have heard of. It's called Journeys and I was doing so good that I got promoted like really fast within that company. In the meantime, I always did hair for my friends and stuff. They're like, dye my hair or cut my hair. And so I still always did hair. You know, my friends would like pay for the product costs. I wouldn't even charge them. Fun like punk rock hair. And if you wanted some fun punk rock hair, I was capable. Um, so I always did that and I would always do makeup for my friends and things like that. If anybody needed their makeup done, they'd be like, can you do my makeup? And I was like, sure, I enjoyed it. I always knew I wanted to move to LA so as a kid it was just one of my dreams I drove out there when I was 18 years old I lied to my parents that I was going to Wisconsin because Wisconsin's like right above the border of Illinois in Chicago area and I drove with friends uh, all the way to LA and lied to my parents Sorry, they found out, don't worry. Because I got speeding tickets. So then my mom one day is like, Nebraska, and I was like, ugh, and Utah, and I was like, ah. 
and long story short don't speed and lie to your parents because then later I was in a lot of trouble which later got cleared up but again I was like 18 at that time so yeah I wanted to live in LA after going there I spent two weeks there with friends and I was like oh my god I need to live here so then fast forward I worked for journeys and I was like an area manager I managed a bunch of the stores and I ended up moving out to LA and running all the LA stores out there and still continuing to be like a district type manager area manager for them and I realized I'm really good with people like I enjoyed talking to people I enjoyed selling shoes and I love fashion anyway so it was kind of right up my alley and I managed managers which was fun and I enjoyed teaching and training and in the meantime, one of my friends out there, her name is Cassie, her and my friend Razor, they owned this salon called Gorgeous and it was right on Melrose. And it was so awesome. It was like this punk rock, badass salon. So rad. And Cassie knew that I had been doing makeup and hair for years. They ended up needing an assistant for a gig. Somebody canceled on them last minute. I used to come to their salon and help wash clients' hair and stuff like that on my free time. Since I moved out there, I didn't have like a ton of friends. So, and I honestly love being around them. They were incredible people and friends. They were like role models to me, obviously, because fast forward to now, as you can tell, I do what I do because of them. And so they are the people that inspired me to be who I am today. They asked me to assist them on a album cover shoot and it was for, there was like a TV show at that time called Rockstar Supernova. And it was finding a singer for this like super band and the drummer was Tommy Lee, the bass player was Jason Newsted from Metallica. Um, Gilby Clark was the guitar player and he used to be in Guns N' Roses. So they wanted a singer for that group. I made good money that day and I realized like that was the most fun I'd had in so long. And I realized that's what I wanna do. At that time I was actually pregnant with my first kid and I was three months pregnant with him. And then I realized I had to move back to Chicago because I needed support from my family. Having a baby's hard enough and being 2,000 miles away from all family was really hard on me. So I moved back to Chicago, still working for Journeys. I was an area manager out here in Chicago. I kept working for Journeys after I had my son. And I always dreamed of opening my own salon someday and I had this really crappy boss. I got this like awful boss one day and that kind of wrecked my whole experience. But at the same time was the best thing that ever happened to me because I ended up having a dream that I opened my own rock and roll salon and overnight I was like, that's it. I'm leaving this company and I'm opening my own business. And I learned so much because the corporate world, is, it's good, you know, there's, there's a lot of things I learned on how to run a business and I could have never done it without journeys. And I really did learn how to not only run a business, but manage many stores. Uh, I was always saving to hopefully open my own business someday. And then it just kind of pushed it to happen a little sooner. I had a dream of my salon and overnight I just kind of was like I'm doing it and so I opened Rock Razor Scissors and the rest was history and that really changed my life. Open your own business is super hard to say the least. I'm sure anybody can imagine if, if it was that easy everybody would do it but obviously it's not easy I still don't know how I did it sometimes I mean I was really young I was 23 or 24 years old when I opened my salon and I I don't know I was very ambitious I can say that I always had like a drive that 
I don't know where it comes from. I believe it comes from my mom. My parents moved to a whole nother country with like two small children. And actually my parents had their own business too when I was growing up. So I don't know what it is about these foreigners and opening businesses, but it's real cause that's what we did. I'm sure I was inspired by them always having their own business as well. If you've been thinking about doing something like that, just do it. Just open your own business. You know, life's too short not to follow your dreams. I know I'm really glad I followed mine and I would never be who I am today if it wasn't for really just saying F it, you know, and just like putting everything on the line and opening my own salon. Keep in mind at that time, I was a mother of a one-year-old. He was almost two. Pregnant with my younger son right when I opened the salon. First year of my business, I was pregnant and I had a two-year-old the first year. It was just like a crazy time in my life and I wasn't gonna let that stop me from succeeding. Obviously, I just kept going and I had amazing people at that time working for me. I had a niche. I had my head on straight. Like I knew what I wanted and even when people you know, didn't believe in me or believe in what I had in mind. I was always very passionate and I didn't care what anybody thought. People told me like my dreams are crazy out of this world. Well, I don't know. I've always told people dream big because honestly, I really believed in my goals and I never stopped working to make them happen and I believe that anybody can do that if they really try and I gave it my all. I definitely pushed myself and I don't know, did stuff out of the box. I tried everything. Rock, razor, scissors was like a crazy time. I wanted to do hair that was cool. At that time, this blue, purple, pink hair business was not as common as, as it is now. This was 2008 and the reason I opened the salon is because when I was a kid, there was no place like that and I really wanted to open a place that did the funky hair and stuff like that and it just didn't really exist. You might be lucky and find a salon that has a hairstylist that knows how to do hair like that, but it was just not common and I wanted the super diagonal forward bob and I wanted, you know, the shave part that like had graphics in it and and a lot of people weren't doing that at that time so I took it upon myself to say hey this is the place to get this done rock razor scissors this is the place that appeared out of thin air the stuff of dreams your very own rock and roll salon we don't do old ladies unless you're a really cool old lady we want you and your stank mohawks your dreads your ratty pink and purple extensions. Your fried platinum hair. This is kind of funny. We do metal, we do bands, we do fashion trends. We want crusty punks and rockabilly kids. Hardcore kids, why the F not? This is like in our, on our website. You want a flat top? I want to give you one. Come hang out, be part of our family. We're professional, we're the poo. We're what you're looking for. I don't think we were professional at all, but who cares, man? It was like the time of my life. At that time, I think all of us that worked there, we all know that it was definitely something that was way ahead of its time. And we all can definitely say it was a blast. We did hair for awesome bands. We met so many amazing people. We did hair for Warp Tour. All kinds of shows. I mean, every venue in Chicago that you can think of, we did hair at. We loved what we did. It was exciting. I would get an email or a call that like radio heads in town and I need to be there in like three hours to do their hair. And I was like, okay. And I like would pack everything up to like go do radio heads hair. And it was awesome and cool because our clients were excited. We would do hair for their favorite bands. Mastodon one day and then like Britney Spears concert the next day. And then like Warp Tour. And it was just, it was a lot, but it was, 
it was fascinating, it was fun, and we didn't really brag or anything like that. We might have posted on our Facebook or MySpace at that time saying like, hey, we'll be out of the salon, whatever, but we never took pictures with celebrities. We never did anything like that. The stylists that worked for me knew that that was not allowed. It wasn't about that. Granted, we were doing that and that was awesome. It was exciting, it was a fun time. We loved music, we loved shows, and being within all of that. And I understand now what it takes to get to the level of respect as an artist, as a makeup artist or hairstylist that just loves what they do and I really truly love what I do that's the whole reason behind anything that I'm doing is because this is my favorite thing to do in the world it's art and if you've been listening then you already know art is my life and doing hair and makeup and nails it's all art to me and being around people it's it's everything it's super exciting and fun and I really really loved Rock Razor Scissors and even though I'm super glad that I got asked to go on tour eventually and work for one artist uh, and travel with them I also know that the time that I had my salon being a businesswoman and all of that I couldn't have probably done tour the way I do without all of that knowledge. I definitely use so many bits and pieces of my businesswoman and hardworking values in touring. So even though I'm a hairstylist, makeup artist, and some people look down on that, not to say like, not like that, but like people are like, oh, you're just like a hairstylist, makeup artist. And it's like, no, I'm not. I mean, I do hair and makeup, but I do a lot more than that. And I, I, I didn't become a touring hairstylist makeup artist because just because I'm good at doing hair and makeup. I became a touring hairstylist makeup artist because I am a businesswoman. I can put on many hats and I have lots of drive and it all comes together. You have to be on time. You have to be able to work on your feet. Sometimes you need something and it's not there. You have to be in different countries and just kind of adapt to your environment all the time. And I had so much experience before I proper went on tour with adapting to my environment. I literally did hair in the weirdest places in the world, I would say. All kinds of bathrooms. Let's start there. And then also just like anywhere. I've done hair anywhere. If you're a hairstylist and you work in front of a mirror all the time, take that away and do not work with any mirror near you for a week. And you'll be like, oh, that's messed up. And like work with no hydraulics on your chair, bad lighting. I mean, you name it, I've done it. So uh, I've washed people's hair in the weirdest sinks of the world. Like, so. When it comes down to it, when you're getting your hair done, you're just a person and I'm just a person and I cut your hair and that is all that is. So that is the beginning of my career. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to comment and I'll answer anything for you. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I know you didn't learn how to do these nails, but I've posted it before. I just figured I would, I needed to do my nails anyway. Now I'm going to paint them. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about who I am and where I've come from. And feel free to ask me anything. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And let me know if you guys have any other suggestions on videos you'd like to see. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye. See you later.